Good morning. morning. God is good all the time. time. Welcome to our service this morning. You bless us with your presence. We welcome everyone who might be watching on Facebook Live as well. I have a couple of announcements. Uh, Let's do birthdays. It is Betty Haycock's birthday today, and it's Judy Allen's birthday. Judy, nice to see you. Uh, Happy birthday to you. Uh, Betty Haycock, of course, we had been asking for a card shower for Betty, so hopefully you had a chance to send her a birthday card. I did go see, Fritzy and I went to see Betty this week, and she was pretty good. She was in good spirits, and we had a good conversation, a good visit, and uh, we're gonna be stopping again today to take her her birthday card, so. But Judy Allen, Betty Haycock, Kathy Hershey on the fourth, Ina Thomas, that we forgot to put Ina Thomas's Birthday in there. Hers is the fifth, and Dennis McGee is the seventh. Dennis, happy birthday. Good to see you here as well. Any birthdays we uh, missed in the congregation? No. Anniversaries? No. Uh, we are. We tried to do an ice cream drive-by uh, last Sunday evening. We did, we got a dog and four other people, um, I believe. Uh, so we're going to have ice cream today after the 9:30 service. Whether we're inside or out, and that's going to be decided as we move along this morning. Uh, you know, if you want to come back at 10:30 and have ice cream with us, that would be fantastic. Um, I am also doing communion in the parking lot with our reserved host after the service. So it'll be 10:45 to 11:15. So anybody who's watching on Facebook, if you want to come by to receive communion, that'll be after the 9:30 service. Uh, you'll see in your Trinitarian, there is no Synod Assembly this year. They're just going to postpone it until next year. There really isn't much except the budget, and they can work that out through uh, Synod Council, most likely. So Trinity's Table, we are accepting items for Trinity's Table always. Um, there's a list there that Laurie Perry gives to us that's listed in your, uh, your Trinitarian as well. I got a... Text from Carol Cawthorn and Karen Moeller had taken a turn for the worse, and then the next day I got a text that she took a turn for the better. So uh, it's just going to be up and down for Karen Moeller, uh, it looks like, in terms of her recovery from COVID-19. So uh, I have not heard of anybody else that has uh, contracted COVID-19 or anybody uh, that is in the hospital. I did start my devotions again, so you have August 1st through the 15th in the back of the sanctuary, in the nave here, or in the narthex as well. Anything I have missed? Any announcements I forgot? Then we will begin our service with the confession. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Let's just take a minute and think about ways we disappointed God, ways that we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Let's just take a moment. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And our call to worship. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Blessing and honor and glory and might be unto the Lamb. Worthy is Christ, who has ransomed us by his blood from every tribe and tongue and nation, and made his people a kingdom and priests to our God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is is to come. Amen. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, eternal Lord, we praise you for your love and ask for your continuing favor. Look upon our human need and touch us with your healing hand. Help us to live in peace and prosper us in our honest pursuits. Sustain any who suffer because of their faith and be the physician of the sick and the mighty defense of the distraught. Uphold your church in every place and give us the will to give of ourselves for the building of your kingdom. Pour upon us the new measure of your spirit that we may rise above our apathy so as to assume greater responsibility for the service of others. Give us, O oh God, comfort and consolation, the zest of life and the courage of faith, until that day when in mercy you call us to be with you forever, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And we'll pray the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Gracious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Andrea is going to read the lesson. The first reading is from Isaiah, the 55th chapter. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. The second reading is from Romans, the ninth chapter. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. disciples 
and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. So where do you go when you want to get away from everything? Do you have a special place, you have a deserted island you like to kind of retreat to, you know? We all feel like, or many people feel like they've been forced upon a deserted island here with this uh, pandemic. Uh, and that's been going on for way too many months with no escape, it seems. So we're all hoping for a miracle because it sure seems like we need one. The text this morning, we, it's, it's a very well-known text, the feeding of the 5,000, or at least Matthew's version of it. And we know that Jesus had heard about the death of John the Baptist, that the, the beheading of John at the whim of Herod Antipas, and as such, he was hoping to get away. To a deserted place at least by himself along with his disciples but he couldn't have gone too far he most likely wouldn't be able to escape the the rule the power of Herod and by the way he couldn't outpace the crowd who followed him on foot who went to some area that they seemed to have known that Jesus and his disciples would land their boats so they needed some time off, but it doesn't seem like they got any relief, any access to just time to pray and to be alone. Now Matthew, the Gospel writer, as the other Gospel writers do, he puts his Gospel together with divine revelation and his ability to write a narrative. Right? He puts together parables that Jesus taught. He puts some together in certain sections. He puts miracle stories together in certain sections. So the placement of these stories in Matthew's narrative um, seemed to be purposeful in the teachings of how he wanted to tell the story of Jesus Christ. You know, if you look back in Gospels, Matthew chapters 8 and 9, you'll see that he puts, Matthew the Gospel writer puts about, Ten miracle stories together, which seem to highlight what discipleship means for his followers. Perhaps Matthew is trying to highlight the power of Jesus, Jesus' power within the realm of his followers, uh, within the realm of this believing community, uh, who will hopefully approach Jesus with prayer and trust. Prayer and trust. And trust. Two of the things Jesus is trying to teach his disciples are necessary to be a follower. So for the context of the miracle story today, the disciples sure don't sound very trusting, do they? We know they've been on this journey with Jesus, trying to escape to get to an out-of-the-way place since uh, John's death. In the midst of being tired and being frustrated, perhaps, they hope for some time off, and so did Jesus. But what does Jesus do when they get off the boat and they land? He doesn't send the crowds away. He doesn't tell them to get lost so that he and his disciples can have some time to themselves. He ministers to the crowd. He takes his focus off himself and off his disciples, turns to the people to begin curing their sick. So the disciples must have been feeling hurt and disappointed. And then, to seemingly pour salt into their injured egos, Jesus asks the disciples to solve an unsolvable problem. There are 10,000, maybe more people, if you add the women and the children, in need of food, Jesus says, go find something to eat for these people. Do it within the hour. It doesn't matter if this is a deserted place. And do it before it gets dark. 
His disciples were tired, they were weary, they were hurting, they were hungry. And now they have this unsolvable problem that they're trying to find some resolution. So he asked, what is Jesus doing? Of course, I've been asking that question for the last six months, right? I've been asking that question a lot lately. What is, what is Jesus, what is God doing in the midst of this pandemic? What's God doing in the world? What's God doing in the church? What's God doing in our lives right now? Too often life presents us with what we think are unsolvable problems and we immediately begin to look for the easy way out, the shortcuts. I can imagine the disciples thinking the same way. You know, they would be saying to Jesus, look, Jesus, can't you just send them home? Right? Look how late it is, right? They need to buy food from the neighboring markets. I can also see Jesus just smiling and looking at his disciples and saying, they don't have to leave. You find them something new. Remember, Jesus is trying to teach them something about trust and prayer. I'm hoping this pandemic has given you some time to do some reassessment in your life. Reassessing not only what you have, but what's important, who is most important. You know, I, I have to think that the disciples feel as if they've been hit by something that just makes them feel sick to their stomachs. They have to be thinking it's going to take a miracle to feed these people with no visible resources. Now I know that there are people in this world that have a problem with miracles, right? There seem to be two categories for what people think about miracles. First category is miracles happened in Jesus' day and they still happen now, right? In other words, if God did it then, God can still do those miracles today. The other camp that people might be in are, well, miracles happened in Jesus' day, but they don't happen now. In other words, God did it then, but God doesn't have to, there's no longer any reason for God to convey God's power. Let me tell you where I am on these two categories. I believe that miracles can happen when we say yes to God. When we approach God with trust and prayer, it's much harder for God to ask when we approach God with the attitude of, I can't, I won't, I don't have, I need more. See, the problem with the increase of scientific knowledge in our society today, in our world today, is that we're tempted only to assign God's presence and power and actions to the places that are otherwise not explainable through science. And this, in my opinion, is a reductionist view of God's power and God's actions and God's presence in the world. I don't believe we can put God in a box like that. Either we believe that God is in all things or we believe God is in nothing. And the latter is not an option for me. So where do we stand with the miracle of the 5,000? Well, I like the idea that God often begins to work in our lives using the things we already have. Too often life presents us with what seems to be unsolvable problems and situations and instead of thinking, well, what do I have that God can use in this situation? We tend to think, there's no way that I can do what God asks me to do. Which leads to more negative emotions and feelings. Jesus says, you feed them. The disciples say, well, all we have are five loaves and two fish. What can we do with that? Again, I see Jesus.
Jesus smile and just say, just watch. You see, too often we miss the little ways that God works in our world and in our lives. All the while looking for and expecting the big miracle. And when that doesn't happen, then we blame God for not caring. And I'm not saying that we need to put God to the test by asking Him to do great miracles in our lives. And when they don't happen, then we can join the other people in the world and say, well, see, God doesn't care. What I am saying is that God is active every day in our world, in our lives, in our community, in the places that we expect, and even in the places we least expect. I believe that. I believe God can do the miraculous. But not only the, mir the miraculous, God has the power to do quite a lot with just a little. If you remember my sermon from last week, and I know you all remember my sermon from last week, I preached about, uh, the lesson was, it takes just one. Right? We had, uh, we had about five parables, including the mustard seed and the pearl of a great price and the treasure hidden in the ground. I said it takes just one, one fish, one seed, one person, one hidden gift to make the difference in how and when God not only is seated in our lives, but God is seated in the world. Here it took just one lunch, one young boy to step forward with his lunch to feed a multitude. When we give, when we give to God in trust and in faith, who knows what our gifts can do through the power of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Just one warning. One warning. Understanding miracle stories as they appear in the Bible and relating them to our world today is complicated, if not complicating. If we take the accounting of the miracle today, the feeding of the 5,000, and we hear it as if it comes from a first century reporter, then we don't necessarily hear the parable as the first century community would have heard this parable, or this healing story, or this miracle. In, in other words, we should hear this story not as God can feed the entire world if God wants to. Instead, I think we need to hear, through Jesus Christ, all people can be fed the bread of life. Jews, Gentiles, everyone. God looks to us and God says, you give them something to eat. Notice in the miracle, it's the disciples, the ones who said, we can't do it, who then feed the people. God uses the people who think they don't have enough to be a part of the miracle. When we accept the challenge, when we move forward in obedience and trust, it's then that God really begins to act. And great things, the miraculous and the small, will, ha will happen as well. Amen? We are going to profess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. We just ask that if you're wearing your mask, you can say it quietly, otherwise you can say it silently to yourself. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Andrew is going to read the prayers. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You take resources that appear to be meager, bless them, and there is enough. May the church trust that what you bless and ask us to share with the world is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Protect this abundance for the well-being of all. Reverse the damage we have caused your creation. Replenish groundwater supplies. Provide needed rains in places of drought. And protect forests from wildfires. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. You offer yourself to all the nations and people of the earth inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness that all nations will run to you and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind, especially all our Trinity families, all essential workers, Joan Wagner, Michelle Shoppard, Terry Govicic, Nedra Schubert, Rob Krauss, Liz Roach, Ina Thomas, Jim Carl, Ellen Brown, Don and Marion Howe, Chris Larthy, Sue Kerr, Brian Keck, John Hancock, Jordan Sloop, Karen Waller, Nancy Schreffler, Bob Sprinkle, Betty Hancock, all residents of nursing homes and all those on our prayer list. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. You offer freely the fullness of salvation. Give our congregation such a welcoming heart that our words and actions may extend your free and abundant hospitality to all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You gather your saints as one united in the body of Jesus. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. In certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By dying, Christ destroyed our death, and rising, he restores our life. In giving us his spirit, he grants us peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. We uh, don't shake hands, we don't hug each other unless you're married. Uh, we can wave to one another, wave to, and wave to everyone, share the peace. And uh, if you have not already, make sure that you have your communion cup, which are in the back. Uh, for communion, I'm going to get things set up here.
Let us pray. Almighty God, your saints were often poor, yet you made them rich in works of faith. Help us to bring you gifts that reflect our gratitude for the heavenly treasures you have given us. Amen. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So we take our communion cups. You can take your mask off. You peel off. I, I take time to try to peel up that top cellophane so that it's easy to grab. We get our wafer. We kind of all hold it up together. body of Christ, give it for you. Amen. And if you're wearing white today, you want to hold this out. Again, together, the blood of Christ shed for you. Receive this blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O giver of every good gift, you have fed us at your table that we might abide in your love and draw our life from you. Send us forth into the world to bear the fruits of the Spirit that all creation might be filled with the life of the risen Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. My cups for home communion are down here, so I'm going to... The sending of communion, let us pray. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you send the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick, homebound, and imprisoned. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament, and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. The blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever. Amen. Thank you for coming to worship this morning. Thanks everyone who was here on Facebook Live. Have a great day. Don't forget to come back. Uh, if you want communion, I'll be in the parking lot 1045 to 1115. We're having ice cream.
around the same time, after 